But Melbourne supporters, uh, I tell you what, they went to bed early last night thinking, oh, well, oh, wow. oh well, just our luck. And has four a, points it was. Yeah, that's was. right. And uh, woke up this morning thinking what, Billy? Well, uh, they couldn't believe it. They kicked nine goals after half time. Geelong kicked two. And have a look at this. This is 37 seconds to go. A free kick to the Cats here. It wasn't a free kick. What, what do they call it? Uh, deliberate or what's the term? Insufficient intent. Which is deliberate. So, so Guthrie. Cam Guffrey, right? He sets up here to kick in board. And he, because that's what he does. A Where lot. would you kick it, Bill? Well, you've got to go around a bit and kick down the line. Because he's coming from that angle, I reckon, doesn't help him. Kick down the line, but don't kick out on the full cam. Mm. That is a bad, bad mistake. There's bad. another one there by Brad Close. Look at the runner get over the <laughs> fence to get the ball for the Melbourne boys because he knows what's going on. And that's 50 metres. 50 metres. This is a great kick because it's just a nice little three-quarter kick to Maxi Gorn. Not sure what Reese uh, Stanley was doing. Uh, Scotty can't watch it. Max goes bang and they win. What a great win. Unbelievable win by the Melbourne Footy Club, but that's one the Cats should have won and got away from the Cats. Brilliant win. Damo, would we be talking more about the deliberate out-of-bounds if the Demons hadn't have won? Because it yep. clearly wasn't deliberate. I mean, you've only got a couple of seconds to go. Socking off the ground to get it forward. Yep. How the umpire yeah. played that deliberate. How he didn't have the feel for the game. I know it turned out OK for them, but mm. we would have been talking about it. I've got no doubt we would have, Brownie. You're right. I mean, there's no reason for uh, Brayshaw to have delivered deliberately gone out of bounds when they were trying to play catch-up. And it was redemption of sorts, wasn't it, for Max Scornbill? Yes. I know you can't appreciate it right now, but round one, 2018. <laughs> oh. This is also oh, come on, Max. not quite after the siren, but you can see the amount of time left on the on the screen. It also was uh, what happened in 1987. Stephen Kernahan, captain of Carlton, Good needed goal. to kick that goal for his team to finish top of ladder after the final round of that particular season. They went on to win that year's flag. And... There's a bit of a link there, given that the Demons have finished the minor premier. First time Ooh. since 1964. We know what happened. What happened? That year, they won the flag, Bill. The last time they won a flag. 57 all years ago. up for the Demons. Mm. Oh, the stars are aligned. Oh, okay. What'd you make of that, Mark, Kane? Yeah, so let's look at how this happened, TJ. When you're tired, when it's late in the da- game, you're fatigued, you've got to be thinking straight. Let's highlight Max Gorn there. This is amazing vision. Stanley's doing the right thing. He's putting body contact with him. He's going with him all the way. Somewhere along the line, Reece Stanley has a complete brain fade. He thinks Lever's going long to the top of the goal square. He's going to be there to punch it through. Watch Max Gorn here. Watch the little point. You can just see it. That's where he wants it. Reece Stanley on the back foot, walking backwards, not forwards. He's got to come up on Max. You've got spares there. The kick from Lever, as you said, Bill, is spot on. And that's where Max Gorn's improved his game, being able to push forward and hit the scoreboard. Kane, Geelong were dominant in the second and third quarters. Geelong played some of their best footy of the season in that second quarter. But I want to take a look at the last quarter, the numbers first of how it looked with Melbourne's dominance. So it was obviously down the bottom there. Six goals, 238 to two behinds. But where did they lose it? Well, they couldn't get their hands on the ball, yep. firstly. Uh, contest the possession, where Geelong are normally pretty good. Belted by the Demons. Inside 50s, 13 to 8. Max Gorn had one of the great last quarters you'll see from a Ruckman, one through the clearance. But I reckon Paddy Dangerfield let them down from the first bounce. So let's take a look at the vision where Geelong let themselves yeah, down. So Dangerfield, as a sweep, you don't go charging in, hunting the ball. But because of the score, Board maybe he decided we're going pretty well. He loses his spot in the stoppage. An easy goal to start. This is this one. Jack Henry is on Spargo, who had a good last quarter. So how close is he? He's got to be closer to his player. He loves to lay off to try and help. He does an impact. He has a goal kicked on him. I would expect that he'd get tighter the next time around. This one, Cameron Guthrie and Clayton Oliver. So Guthrie has his arm across. Oliver was dominant. Guthrie was winning a lot of the footy. How much does Guthrie want to defend here on Oliver? He's there, he's there. Oliver gets the ball out. How much does Guthrie want to smother there? He probably thinks the scoreboard's still, I'm going OK in that situation. Another big stoppage. The ball goes forward. A mark by Sparrow. So Sparrow marks the foot. Everyone has got time there. Jack Henry is on Spargo. Again, I'm thinking he's just had a goal kicked on him. Will Jack Henry tighten up? No, he doesn't. Does he impact well enough? No, he doesn't. And let's see what happens in this last oh, quarter. No. So too many mistakes here no. from Geelong in big moments, which got Melbourne back into the game. And then we see the last one. I'm also asking, what are you doing, Tom Hawkins? Gary, did you go hard enough? And don't look around, Reese. He was your man. Had to, uh, too many mistakes bang, bang, there by Geelong. And uh, yep. amazing how momentum can switch in this game, TJ. Yeah, and all absolutely. Those, all those mistakes have led to the, yeah. the Cats now needing to go to Adelaide to play Port Adelaide. And uh, Chris Scott was still trying to take some positive out of uh, what had happened in that game, in the, in the big picture. And Simon Goodwin, incredibly proud of the way his team was able to make the necessary changes at halftime.
So what, what we try to coach in those situations is the player should fight as hard as he can to touch the ball before it goes out on the full. So I think he's entitled to contest the ball. Um, but I think the decision before that for the um, insufficient intent free kick was probably a bit strange as well. So um, you win some, you lose some. That's the thing that I love the most, that we were ultimately challenged in one of the biggest ways. You know, for the guys to be able to regather themselves at half time, understand what the game needed and uh, to change and implement the change required was outstanding.